Click Dork back again. Today, my friends, we are going to be continuing my series on click application automation. And we are going to be looking at the art of the possible. What I want to do is whet your appetite for the automation that I'm going to show you. Because I'm going to be honest, it's going to be a little bit overwhelming when you see it at first. What I want to show you is an application. This is our SAP Orders to Cash Accelerator. And it has, well, a rather robust data model to it. You know, kind of like an awful lot of your ClickSense applications, because after all, that's what we do. Bring a whole lot of disparate data sources together so that you can get a true enterprise whole story view of your data. Well, what happens in our production environments where we've got a lot of developers doing a lot of data models like this, and we need to know what the impact might be should we decide we're going to change a field in our database? What happens if you're saying, hey, we're really tight on memory and we'd like to find out if any of these fields in this entire app aren't used anywhere else in the app? Well, that would be a lot of work, wouldn't it? Because fields could be used in expressions, they could be used in labels, they could be used inside of variables, they get used inside of other variables that are dollar sign expanded from other variables, that are used inside of master measures, that are used inside of master dimensions, that could be used inside of charts, that are inside of master visualizations, and you get the idea. That's an awful lot of work, should somebody say that. It would be nice. I mean, just, just pretend out of the blue that you could do that in an automated fashion. Right? And let's pretend that the automation would go through and that it would generate for you an application that would look like this, based on your application. And that you could see exactly how many fields were there, how many were used or not used, that you would be able to go through and actually see, oh, let me look at my top 10%, and I'm going to drop those fields from my data model, and I could see from those fields how much I could save in terms of RAM. That would be crazy cool, wouldn't it? And it would be crazy cool if this application that were built for you in an automated fashion would show you where fields are used. So I'm going to unselect the fields I'm not going to use, and I'm going to say, ooh, I may want to change the spelling of this sales item created on dat or dat. Where is it used? Well, it's only used 205 times. Sure, go ahead and change the spelling of that. Right? It's used directly in 39 objects. It's inside of a master dimension. It's inside of 15 master measures. It's inside of 100 variables that are used inside of 25 master visual objects that are on seven different sheets. Ah, what's the, what's the problem? I mean, that's, that's not much impact. Sure, go ahead and change that. Right? Kind of crazy, isn't it? And, 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 and how would I get this application? Because, you know... If I was going to do this automatically, I may not know that I have a database. I might not know if I want to store this data into a CSV file or a Parquet file or blah, 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 blah. I would want that application built so that it's all inline. And, and all of the data that is surfaced in what I just showed you in that application was just inline. And, and you know, I would want that in an automated fashion, wouldn't I? Well, that's where the art of the possible comes. Until now, I've been showing you some very simple automation simply to show you how to use the blocks. How you drag or drop blocks, how you use input, how you use output, how you define variables, how you can modify expressions. Well, what I'm going to show you now is this click application automation that I will show you at the end where to download it from so that you can also use this and put this out there as part of your center of excellence um, for your team. The automation is from my buddy Dan Pila, who's a legendary enterprise architect uh, here at Click, so you probably already know his name. One of the things that I want to show you that was kind of neat when, when Dan showed this to me, I'm like, Dan, why does it say that it's triggered? I mean, what I'm going to use is this automation. I'm going to point it to one specific app that I'm trying to address, like that SAP acceleration app. And I want to find out how I can improve that one app. Why would this need to be triggered? And, and his point was it could be triggered from every app that gets published to a particular catalog. Well, that would be crazy cool, right? 
if it would automatically run for any application that gets published out to a, a particular space or a managed space somewhere and then you could be notified for that app well if that were going to happen and what I showed you that means that it would have to build every aspect of this with nothing else there is no input to it it has to go find everything from the application it would have to go through read all the sheets all of the charts all of the variables everything from the code and analyze all of that and that in fact is what it does so that's the reason that this thing is set to trigger there's some inputs for this basically asking hey what application or is it you're looking to do do you want to generate the app on the fly or do you just want to see the output about it so if you look at it and you just see the output you're like eh there's five fields that aren't used whatever if you look at the output and there's 759 fields that aren't used you'd say oh man I definitely want to analyze that app and by that let me start walking through this by simply scrolling down and see if you get the point wow this is a lot of different steps this is an awful lot of different steps and a whole lot of loops and a whole lot of conditions and wow I've never had an automation that I had to scroll horizontally before and it looks like I can holy cow I could keep going and I can keep going and going and going and there's so many loops here and so much wow this looks this kind of looks powerful, doesn't it? And as I keep scrolling down here, I'm scrolling too fast for it to even keep up with. And yet, based on my cursor, there's still a whole lot more to go. And I could keep scrolling and scrolling. And this looks like click application automation is actually incredibly powerful. Let me scroll back over here and see if this will catch up to me. So much code. Look at this. I'm a oh man. This just keeps going on and on and on and on and on. And let me save you the time. I'm going to scroll real quickly to the end. Wow. That, that my friends is an awful lot of steps. A am I right? That's a lot more than what I've been showing you. And what I wanted to show you, this is truly the art of what is possible with click application automation. One of the things I've showed you in my training videos was how to use comments. You simply uh, right click on an object and you say, hey, I'd like to put a comment in there. When I'm doing that with four or five blocks, I'm sure you thought, Dalton, that's a little bit overkill. When would I ever really need to do that? Well, what happens when you're working in a workflow like this? Well, the great thing is if you've got comments or based on the names, I could find those things. So I'm going to look for something which is crazy uh, that my buddy Dan implemented, which was recursion. And so if I come up here and I start looking for the word recursive, it will find it in those comments. And I know what you're thinking. Come on. Recursion is a crazy deep coding thing. There's an, it's not like... I could just include Python code that recursively loops through stuff. Wow, I didn't even realize there was a custom coding block that could be added. And Well, I could use PHP or Node.js or Python and do what Dan has done here where he's actually building some code and he's got a function for process vars that he ends up calling itself uh, through the loop to recursively go through and find field names inside of any variables that are included in 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 master items that are included in charts who that was a mouthful yeah it, it, it can well let's see some of the other really cool things that Dan has implemented here well, he's also implemented a regex function. And what is that doing? Well, I could look at that. 
one of the things that I showed you before was how we can use this little toggle to view to change the view of how we're looking at that and it uses a regex replace function passes it the name and it is looking for the codes that it's trying to replace in my regex function that's crazy cool didn't even know that was possible oh I guess that's what the art of the possible is I want to show you one other thing as well where Dan goes through and actually flattens something there's a function in click application automation to take a list of things and flatten it out uh, into a list how how crazy cool is that well one of the things uh, that we've got to take care that we got to make sure that we look out for as we're looping through all of these fields um, that are in the application is that we don't decide that we want to drop any key fields and so Dan gives you an excellent example here of how to use a filter to go through the list and filter something out of the list he also shows you how to deduplicate a list. That's kind of crazy cool. Let me show you the output from this. When it's run, it outputs all that information so you could see it. If you use an input flag to generate the application that I showed you to start with, um, it will also output that. But one of the neat things that Dan did that I wanted to show you since I focused an awful lot on output is how he identified key rows and bolded them and uppercased them like this using a hashtag 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 prefix so I can scroll down through here you can see this is a tremendous amount of output that's gone in fact there's so much I have to say load more and then each of the sections in here he has gone through and done that for and I could you know go through 305 pages of output I simply can't imagine a better click application automation than this click field usage automation from Dan Pila to show you the entire art of what's possible with QAA not only does Dan give you the JSON code that you can use to upload and then create this in your own environment you'll simply do new uh, automation and then you would upload this uh, he also walks through and gives you complete documentation for this and helps you understand what it is that you're doing helps you understand where this is not going to be a good fit so don't even bother um, and it gives you a video walking you through all of that as well as, as to hey how's this gonna happen what you would need to set up and basically all you need to do as I've showed you you would download this um, the JSON for this project upload it to your environment pick the application you want to run it on and it is going to go through and generate that for you um, hope that you have a great time for this if you watch this through YouTube you'll have this link embedded um, so that you don't have to try to copy this link by staring at the screen hope that you really enjoyed this time and you have a great day